But what Chief Executive Ahmed Fahoua has claimed is a triumph conceals the bare fact that our national carrier is still bleeding cash from its letters division. While total revenues were up 3% to $6.6 6 billion in 2015-16 on the back of a parcels boom, Australia Post is set to lose $1. 5 billion on letters over the coming five years as snail mail becomes more unpopular than ever. Letters declined by a record 9.7% in 2015-16, bringing losses of $138 million. But a potential extra $300 million in losses was avoided by overhauling the division in January. When Australia Post unveiled its controversial new two-tiered pricing, Mr Fahor said that, before the reforms, the publicly owned company had been on track to lose $5 billion on letters in the five years to 2021. This is a $3.5 billion turnaround in less losses to protect the taxpayer from the decline in this particular service usage, he said. Mr. Fahur defended Australia Post's new two-speed letter service, which since January has split regular post into $1.50 per priority mail and $1 snail mail, which can take up to six working days to deliver. The 50-cent priority label must be affixed along with a $1 stamp. He said the vast majority of non-business customers chose to stick with regular mail while 9% chose the priority option, which takes up to four days. Only express post envelopes are now delivered the next day, at a cost of $5.75. In a year of big changes and the inevitable customer complaints that go along with them, Australia Post appointed Christine Corbett to the new role of Chief Customer Officer and Greg Sutherland as Chief Innovation Officer business and government, which buy high-volume prepaid postage and account for 97% of all mail sent, were opting for 70% regular post and 30% priority, Mr. Fahor said. For every $1 increase in revenue, you will lose 25c in terms of the vol effect, he said, citing the analysis Australia Post presented to the ACCC ahead of the reforms. Using those models, something in order of 1 to 2 percent of volume decline can be attributed to price. He said business customers were hit with a price increase to an average 70 cents per stamp, while stamps for concession card holders and Christmas cards were frozen at 60 cents. The 2010 price, to protect those people who are vulnerable, we are also working with customers where they need digitization. Digital visits are up 25.3% to 182 million. Quote, Mr. Fahor said. He said the company was committed to redeploying staff affected by changes to the letters business. With no forced redundancies, the parcels boo. While letters have declined 43% in eight years as Australians increasingly move their communications online. Parcels are booming. The parcels business has performed well despite increased competition from overseas players. Quote, Mr. Fahor said. He said Australia Post had outperformed in difficult market conditions to post an 8% profit increase in its parcels division. With its future strategy, focused on our customers as they continue their love affair with shopping online. He said the company had invested in a significant increase in capacity of our processing centers, while implementing new parcel delivery options including parcel safe drop and redirection services for its 4 million My Post customers, who had almost doubled in number on the previous financial year. We have been experimenting with drone deliveries and also identifying whether night deliveries may be more convenient for our customers. Quote, Mr. Fahor said, We also have an eye on the export market, whereby small businesses are looking to export to the world.
This included a new strategic alliance with global logistics provider Aramex, and existing partnerships with Alibaba, Amazon and eBay. Our business is 207 years old, but we are more efficient and motivated than ever before, quote, Mr. Fahor said. We have to continue to evolve to remain relevant and sustainable, so we can continue to serve customers and communities everywhere. Dana.McCauley at news.com.a